Today I want to follow up last week's video with a discussion about arrays and pointers and partial sorting. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's video is based on a comment that came after last week's video, which if you haven't seen it, it was about sorting and Q-sort and why in the world so often when we're sorting things do we end up with pointers to pointers, you know, that double asterisk thing that just drives people crazy. And so the question that made me think we needed another video on this was this one, which asked basically, excuse me, can we sort partially, like just one half of the array? And the short answer is yes, we can, but I think this is an opportunity to talk a little more about fundamentally what arrays are in C, how they work, and why this works, where maybe this wouldn't work quite as well in another language, at least without some additional API support. But before we jump into specifics, I just a huge thanks to all of you who help support this channel, who make it work, either by providing support through Patreon, which is where you can get access to source code and my office hours, and also by buying merch and sharing this with friends and just helping helping let people know that this resource is out there. I really do appreciate it. But now let's jump into the code. Okay, so this is the example we were looking at last time. We actually had two examples, this one that sorts a bunch of integers and this one that sorts structs that represent people. So this person struct here. And I'm just gonna sit here on example dot C because they're all going to work basically exactly the same. Now, the question here is, can we sort just part of the array? And the short answer, like I mentioned, is yes. But the reason is it really boils down to what it means when I say I want an array of integers. When I say I want an array of 10 integer values or an array of 10 ints, and I'm going to call it values, what my compiler is going to do is just allocate a block of memory that is a certain size. Specifically, that size is the size of 10 times the size of an integer, right? It's just a block of memory that's big enough to hold individual ints. And this is true if we did doubles or if we did floats or if we did structs or pointers, it doesn't really matter. All we're doing when we say we want an array is we're setting up a block of memory that has enough space in it to hold the elements that we are specifying, that we're trying to store in that array. This is why when we called QSort down here, we have to tell it because we're going to sort. So it has to know about the array. In order to specify what the array is, we're giving it the base address. That's values. The, the front of where this whole thing starts. We're also getting it the length of the array, basically how many elements we're looking at, and then how big each element is. That's why we have to specify these three things. If we were in a type safe language like Python, Ruby, Java, something like that, well, the size of the array, the length of the array, and the size of the elements in the array would be actually encoded in the data structure in the type. And so most of these languages give us the ability to actually query what the size is. And so you notice if you had a sort algorithm in Python, you're not going to get these three values. You're just going to say, here's my array, sort it. And so at some level, we could say this is kind of annoying, right? Because uh, C is making us type in more stuff. It's making us include more when we want to do something with an array. But the silver lining is that it does allow some flexibility. And that brings us back to the question of can we do a partial sort here? Now, because just just to make sure everyone's on the same page, if we compile this, uh, which I guess, yeah, I already did before, if we run it, you can see, okay, we had 10 ints and we have sorted them, right? In this case, we're sorting by decreasing order. Now, what would happen if, let's say that I just wanted to, say, sort half of the array, right? Well, if I came down here, and let's just keep this around for now, but let's say that we wanted to come down here and say, sort the first five elements. Well, all I would have to do here is say, hey, I want five elements here, right? If I just say it starts at the same location, the, the elements are still ints, but I just want to sort five of them, then let's look at what happens, right? If we recompile and we run it, well, now you can see, okay, so our first five elements, they got sorted. After that, we're back to just random numbers here. So the latter half is not sorted. Okay, well, what if I didn't want to sort the first half? What if I want to sort sort of something in the middle, right? Well, for something in the middle, I could just do, let's say that we wanted to start, uh, we want to ignore the first two elements, but sort the next five after there. So we want to sort the elements at, let's say, uh, index two to index six, for example. So in that case, what I can do is I can keep, you know, the number of elements I want to sort is the same. I'm not changing that at all, but I come in here and just say add two. That's going to shift the pointer over by two ints. And so this should, if all works out, just sort a chunk in the middle of the array. 
And so sure enough, up here, we ignored these two. We're just not gonna, they just are random just the way they were. But we come down here and our next one, two, three, four, five, these are sorted in decreasing order. So this is a really simple idea and it isn't specific to ints. It doesn't matter what data type I use that I, if it's in an array and I could pass it to QSort to sort it, then I can do this same thing and I could just say, I want just a piece of the array. Now, usually we don't wanna do this, whatever, but I do think it's an opportunity for you to start to see a little more clearly what array actually are. At least when you're working in C and C++, your arrays, there's nothing magical about it. It is simply a big block of memory that happens to be big enough to hold the number of elements that you specified that you want to hold in that array. And so that's all for today. I hope it's useful. Hope you learned something new or it reminded you of something that you had forgotten. Do like, subscribe, click something on the way out, and I will see you next week.